Hello and welcome for to another demo from the MicroStrategy Rooster. Today's topic would be logical tables. I'm not going to go into the details about every example and every usage of how to customize these items, but I'm going to talk about the basically the 90% usage and a little bit of customization. First thing, how do you bring a table into MicroStrategy? You go to the schema, warehouse catalog. You have to be an architect, admin, or developer with access to the warehouse catalog. This will show you all the tables that are your in your source or multiple sources. You can switch back and forth. But you have to access to them. It shows you all the tables here. And this will show you the tables that are you're currently using in this. So a table that exists here is not used. If you want to use it, you move it. If you don't want to use it, you move it back. Let's say one of your tables has been changed in the source. You need to update the structure right here, or you can just simply view your structure right here before you update it. Once you made your update of structure, you save and close your warehouse catalog. This is just your regular maintenance and uh, administration of you know your warehouse. Everything that you create there as a table is a logical table that gets stored right here so basically these are just maps of your existing physical tables that are being used by MicroStrategy you don't have to map every table but the ones you map will be created here under the type logical table okay there's also something else that you can do with these tables you can alias them so notice here's an alias but let's delete it and recreate it All right, and delete it. Let's delete the dependence. I don't care for it at this point. And delete it. All right, I'm going to recreate it for you. So here we had a table that had dependence. One of them was state. And let's say you wanted to use that state in a report. So let's create a report with that state. Alright, so let's go to attributes and I'll find that state here. Just run it the grid. Okay. Look at the SQL. Simple, selecting distinct. It's, it's aliased as location in that attribute, so the state is called location. Okay, no big deal. Let me go back to grid and I'm gonna alias it here in this report and call it source state I'll tell you why I did that in a second save and close and I'm save that yeah let's keep it in the same way. so here we are we're working let me drag it into the attribute table to the attribute folder so this is the state that I called source but what if I wanted to create a copy of the state copy of the state and update the schema every time I create something in the schema and I'm gonna edit this report and I'm gonna bring in this new state column and I'm gonna rename it call it destination state and let's say I'm talking about some delivery from states to different states and I want to track them I would also have to have a fact to make this useful. So a fact table would have a column with destination state and a column with source state. Okay. So let's just look at this. What does it do? All right. So this is not doing anything for us. It's doing one to one. All right. Why is it doing that? Because it's got one source. One source. So both of these look up their states, the source and the destination are looking up into one and because you're selecting a column a row I mean for two columns that are identical you basically will get an identical match a one-to-one -one. all right that might not serve your purpose because you might have a destination state that's different than the source state based on the fact that you will add later on okay so again we have to add a fact to make this but in this case 
whatever fact you add, you're still going to get this kind of relationship. So that's not going to help you. What do you need to do? Let me save this and close. Well, what you need to do is create an alias, which we have here now. Here's the source. I'm going to alias it. Rename it and call it destination. Okay? So I'm going to have a destination. Then I'll go to my attribute, this guy. And let me get rid of these. It's going to make it just remap it, modify. And I'm going to remove the M1 and put it in the destination. So here I'm setting up a different lookup for it. What will that allow me to do? It will allow me to cross those two and intersect them with whatever fact on the metric. The schema. And let's run it and see what happened now. Alright, so we don't have one state to one state. We have a state can cross with any state it chooses. Again, which ones remain on this report will depend on the fact. The fact table will have to have two columns. One column is called destination and one is called source. Okay, so they'll have to match to this, this ID and this ID. It doesn't really matter what you call them. You can call it source ID and destination ID as long as you remap this to the destination column in the fact and this to the source and the fact you will be able to create a meaningful report and if you don't believe me look at the SQL so here you go you get one selection and another selection for the other location both from the same table but twice which gives you that flexibility to have that relationship from the fact table to say well I want one from M1 and M2 where say this transaction existed in for sources in A11 and for sources in A12 so whatever fact you create here will allow you to determine that combination of states source and destination but the trick only occurred because of that alias allowed you to do these two selections from the same source but it doesn't even though they're the same source from my strategy engine is saying oh no they're different sources I think well, that's because the alias, you made it think they're two different sources, okay, for the lookup. And that way you can repeat attributes on the same grid as much as you want for any fact that needs a combination of the same type of attribute, okay? Now let's go and create lookup views. Something more important than this is a lookup view. Now, you can also create a table on the fly based on existing tables so let me show you what I'm talking about Oops. there's something called logical table remember how we brought it from the warehouse catalog well I'm gonna create one on the fly for you but you have to be careful with the SQL here you're gonna write your own SQL and any typos so let's go to a table okay, I'm gonna select the ID typos will not be caught by my strategy in this Remember, there's no SQL debugger, and it's going to be dependent on your SQL database uh, that you're using. So be careful. Maybe you want to t check your SQL before you type it here. Maybe copy and paste it. But anyway, so I'm going to select ID, and I'm sum the total. Again, like I said, you got to know what you're doing. So call my T. All right, and from scenario underscore what was it called m4 and I'm gonna do this where my oops see a typo here would have not been caught some where total is greater than say 100,000 and let me group by the ID all right. Now I created SQL. I have to map things. All right. So what am I going to map? Let me add the ID. 
If I don't want to add it from here, I can drag it from here. Okay? Again, dragging doesn't work every time. So sometimes you gotta try a few times. There we go. So it's gotta be a match again to the SQL. So ID, ID. If it's capital, it's capital. Don't get don't you know create anything that's don't create an error here and then not know how to map it right here correctly. So I'm gonna also map the uh let me add a new one, call it my total or my T. Again, match it to whatever is over there. Save and close. New logical table. Let me call it my table. Okay. And let me create an attribute map to it. There it goes, my table. ID. Okay. Save and close. Let's call it my ID. And I want to map the fact. That's the thing about Microsoft. Once you start creating things in the schema, you have to remember you're going to have to do it all above my table. Save and close. Great. That's my fact. Update my schema. Boom, boom. Now let's create a metric. I'm going to create a metric to use that fact. Now remember, the fact source was that table over there. So, um, so we're creating it off a virtual table, not a real table which is based on the table. You'll see how that translates into SQL in a second. And I'll call it my metric. My T metric. Okay. <coughs> got this, got this. Now we just need a report. And hopefully we didn't create any errors. If we create an error, we can debug it. I'll show you in a second. Let's just hope, you know, we don't have to do that in a short period that we have here. Let's see. Let's give me let's get the metric. Look at that. We created our report based on our lookup view. Let me show you how this is gonna look like in the SQL. Then you'll start appreciating it. Look at this. We selected the ID, we selected a fact a metric based on a fact, which is the sum. But where's the source table? Look at my table. There's nothing. Why is there nothing? Because it's embedded from a lookup view. Look, we created a source that only brought in the ID and the totals from the scenario M4 table conditioned on where the total was greater than 100,000. So what I did here is I created at runtime a source that only picked up a bunch of IDs where the total was greater than 100,000 and used it for my report. Now, obviously this specific example can be done in a different way where you just use a regular table and you use a filter on total. But if you do that, which is possible, the SQL will look a little bit different and there might be a need for you to do it this way where that condition did not exist for instance or the or you have a more custom type of condition but let me show you simply if you create a report based on the basic items without using our lookup view so go to our schema and that m4 and i use the the original id that was based on the table and i use the metric that the total metric that was based on that table okay and let me do a condition on the metric where let's expand this where the total is greater than a hundred thousand one two three boom, boom. this should 
in theory, create the same report, but not the same SQL. Okay, same report. Let's visit the SQL. Let's actually pull them next to each other and look at them. All right, look at this. Selected. Where it did the having. It could have done a where. That's another topic. It's just the way my strategy optimizes its SQL. So it did a where. It's greater than 10,000, 100,000 by selecting the IDs. And then it sorted things out by showing the ID and the sum total from that temporary view. So what did my strategy do? It created that inner in a pass and then it created the outer in a pass. What we did is we did the same thing but we were able to use a derived table in this case and force it to do the same thing. Uh, I could change my VLDP properties to replicate it and if you know what you're doing you'll understand what I'm talking about. And there we go. But still, look what's going on. It's using the having because it's using my strategy. So this way, you're by using it this way, the default, you're basically letting my strategy do its business. It's creating its own SQL the way it, it prefers to create it. But here, without modifying any VLDP settings, you are forcing it to use that optimal SQL that you decided that would work the best for creating this new attribute that only displays values for totals greater than 100,000. Is this a good business example? Absolutely not. But I'm just showing you the power of those uh, that logical view table that we just created. This table allows us to create items like ID and total with absolute customization that we choose to embed it in the SQL and reuse it as a derived table. What does this do for us? It allows us to create things that one, if we don't have access to controlling what's in the data warehouse like the views and we need to create an aggregate level this is a good aggregate uh, this is a good place to create aggregates reuse them if there's special customization for instance I wanted to do where the ID was greater than let's say 100 this might not make sense for your general ID this might have a special need, so you might be creating this short table where IDs were greater than 100 and then use that in your in a special report that needed that or requested something custom like that without necessarily modifying your report itself just by replacing your ID attribute on the report. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility if you're an advanced designer or developer to manipulate, you know, your attributes and your sources without actually going into your data warehouse and changing views okay so this is allowing giving you some you know sandbox giving you an opportunity to customize or just giving you the ability to create some you know last minute changes without going to the data warehouse okay I'm not gonna say this okay so hopefully this you know this ability to create tables on your own gives you extra flexibility and more control over your project and hopefully this uh, quick demo was uh, will allow you to explore this topic a little bit more thank you